The beautiful star of Vega, also known as Alpha Lyrae, is one of the most famous stars in the night sky. Fascinating astronomers for centuries with its blue-tinged white colour, the star is visible from most of Earth's surface. Hi everyone, Vega here, and it's been almost three years now since we dedicated a video to one of my favourite stars of all, Alpha Lyrae. So, let's get to it. First of all, in some channel news, over the next few months we will be taking our annual spring haters. This is because frankly my day job workload is too high to continue with videos. I hope to put a few out here and there, and then we should return to the usual at the beginning of July. So if you don't see anything on our regular Sunday slot, don't panic, this is why. It seems in our Brightest Star series we've covered many stars, with Rigel, Betelgeuse, Procyon, Sirius and Adara all having at least 5 videos related to them. And it occurred to me that one of my favourite stars, Vega, hasn't really been focused on much lately, so it gave me the idea for this video, where we'll be looking at the key and perhaps most interesting things about the Alpha Lyrae system. First of all, on an incredible achievement in its own right, Vega is actually the fifth brightest star in the sky. With an apparent magnitude of plus 0.03, it's surpassed in brightness only by Sirius, Canopus, the twin Alpha Centauri stars and Arcturus. Vega's brightness makes it a popular target for astronomers and amateur stargazers alike, but perhaps even more importantly, it's also the reference point where the magnitude scale dips into minors, or scales into positives, depending on your point of view. For that reason, the star has been nicknamed the Standard Bearer Star. Located relatively close to the Earth, at around 25 light years, Vega is interestingly the seventh closest star to Earth that's actually visible to the naked eye, preceded by of course the Sun then the two Alpha Centauri stars, and the other three A-class stars in our local area of Sirius, Procyon and Altair. With a high rotation rate of approximately 236 km per second, at its equator Vega is one of the fastest rotating stars known to astronomers. This causes its shape to be oblate, with its equatorial diameter being about 19% larger than its polar diameter. Vega is also famous for having a disk of dust and debris. The disk is believed to be a result of collisions between asteroids and comets in the Vega system, studied extensively by astronomers and imaged by a number of telescopes, including the Hubble Space Telescope. This debris disk is in many ways analogous to our own Kuiper belt. Vega was also the very first star other than the Sun to be photographed as anything more than just a point of light. Indeed, in 1850, the astronomer William Bond and his son photographed Vega using the Harvard College's Observatory's Great Refractor, which at the time was the largest telescope in the world. The photograph of Vega was a breakthrough in astronomy, because it allowed astronomers to study the star's spectrum and composition. Since then, we've also taken many fascinating pictures of stars indeed, not least this amazing image you can see here of Altair, alongside Betelgeuse Antares, and some of the stars of interest. Used as a navigation star by ancient mariners for thousands of years, Vega was an important star for the Polynesian navigators, who used it to navigate across the Pacific Ocean. This is because the star's declination of plus 38.78 degrees means it can be viewed anywhere north of latitudes 51 degrees south. What this means is that with the exception of the remote islands of Kerguelen in the South Indian Ocean, and the southernmost part of South America, which includes Punta Arenas in Chile, along with Antarctica, Vega remains continuously above the horizon as a circumpolar star. Vega was also used as a reference point by the ancient Chinese, who used it to mark the beginning of the autumn season. Vega is like many other stars, a variable star, meaning that its brightness varies over time. That said, the variations in Vega's brightness are only small and typically less than 0.1 magnitudes, which occur over a period of 0.2 days. The cause of Vega's variability is not actually fully understood, but it's believed to be related to the pulsations in the star's outer layers, as it heaves and puffs under the massive weight and forces as it also spins so quickly. As some of our viewers may remember the 1985 science fiction novel Contact by the great Carl Sagan. It was later turned into an excellent film starring Jodie Foster and Matthew McConaughey, in which a signal is detected from Vega that's believed to be from an extraterrestrial civilization. It certainly helped to popularise the idea of using radio telescopes to search for signs of intelligent life in the universe. Indeed, in a fascinating twist of fate, believe it or not, Vega's importance has actually diminished somewhat over the past 14,000 years. This is because it was the Northern Pole Star in around 12,000 BCE. Not to be outdone though, its southerly declination is slowing, and soon enough it will reverse direction again and travel back northwards. 
By around the year 13,727, Vega will once again be proudly outshining Polaris as our northern pole star once more. This is because the direction of Earth's axis of rotation gradually changes over time in a process known as the precession of the equinoxes. It means that Vega's not actually moving per se, and it's actually us. The Vega system is probably looking at us from afar, with a wry smile on its face as we bob up and down, up and down in a never-ending cycle. A complete procession cycle actually requires 25,770 years. The juxtapositioning though doesn't end there. In the far future, some 210,000 years, Vega will actually replace Sirius and become our brightest star of the night sky, and will peak in brightness in around 290,000 years, with an apparent magnitude of minus 0.81. About a tenth of the age of the Sun, Vega is an A-class star at the more powerful end, with the designation of A05, meaning it's pushing the boundaries of turning into a very, very hot star indeed. But since it is 2.1 times as massive, its expected lifetime is also unfortunately for life in the system, only one tenth that of our Sun. This means that both stars are presently approaching the midpoint of their main sequence lifetimes. Like other A-class stars, there does remain a small window of time for life to evolve in the system, but let's face it, Vega better get its skates on, so to speak. Alpha Lyrae is a fascinating star and the standard bearer for many astronomical references that map out and define our local area. A star in the middle of its life, Vega has and will continue to play an important role in the skies of planet Earth for the foreseeable future. Hopping up and down in a cycle in our skies, northwards and southwards, eventually Vega will become the brightest star of all in our night skies. We wonder, dream and hope that maybe, just maybe, Somewhere in its planetary debris disk, perhaps, a family of vegans are chuckling at us, and indeed watching us from afar. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you would like to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. Thanks to those of you who have already done so, and if you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below, and perhaps next week your idea could show up. Take really good care of yourselves, Look after your friends and family well, and I'll see you on the next one.